Hello guys, in this video we'll cover the 12 main brand archetypes that you can use to guide and strengthen your brand story. Any majorly successful brand has a strong sense of identity and one that also mirrors the hopes and aspirations of their target audience. Finding your brand voice, especially in the small business category, can be quite difficult and often expensive. However, identifying your brand archetype can save you loads of time and money in the long run and show you how to connect instantly with your target audience. The first brand archetype we're going to look at in this video is the innocent archetype whose core desire is to be free, happy and fears doing something wrong and being punished. Think Walt Lee or Audrey Hepburn in pretty much any of her films. The innocent customer prefers straight talking, gimmick free advertising and is naturally drawn to optimistic brands. Heavy handed guilt or inducing ads are likely to repulse them and innocent brands promise simplicity and promote themselves as being pure, simple and trustworthy. The worst thing that can happen is an innocent business is uncovered and corrupt by dissent or distrust. It's actually far better to go for a more simple, trustworthy and simplistic approach as that is more likely to get their attention and their trust. Second is the hero archetype whose main motivation is to prove their worth and their main fear is weakness or failure. Think Erin Brockovich or Michael Jordan. Hero customers are more likely to be swayed by products that are going to put them ahead of everyone else and give them a distinctive advantage. Hero brands promise triumph, promoting themselves as superior to the competition. The worst thing that can happen to a hero business is for a competitor to be rated higher or proven to be better value. Third is the regular guy or girl archetype. They want to belong and feel part of something and they're afraid of being left out or standing out in the crowd. Think Bilbo Baggins or Homer Simpson. The everyman appreciates quality and dependability in their brands and they prefer something that feels familiar and they don't want to get emotionally invested in the brand too much. They just want to be accepted by everyone. The everyman brand archetype promises, belonging, and also takes pride in their down-to-worth ethos. The worst thing that happened to a regular guy archetype or everyman archetype is to appear greedy or elitist. Fourth is the nurturer archetype, driven by their need to care for others and afraid of being met with selfishness and ingratitude for their sacrifices. Think Maria from The Sound of Music or even Gandhi. Nurturer customers want to be recognized for their efforts without being patronized. Aggressive adverts are a major turnoff and a complete no-no, whereas emotionally driven adverts often strike a chord. Nurturer brands often promise recognition for their customers' protection, safety and support and the worst thing a nurturer business can be seen as is harmful or even exploitative. Fifth is the creator, driven by their desire to produce exceptional work and terrified of mediocrity. Think of someone like Doc Brown from Back to the Future or Steve Jobs. Creative consumers generally shun advertising altogether, but if an advertising effort is creative enough and it captures their attention, they will give it the time of day. Those creative brands promise authenticity, positioning themselves as the key to unlocking the customer's creativity. Think of Apple, for example. The worst thing a creative brand can be perceived as is inauthentic or just a sellout. Sixth is the explorer archetype who craves adventure and discovery and fears conformity and inner emptiness. Think Indiana Jones or from a branding standpoint, think of Patagonia. Explorer customers embrace the brands that promote freedom and self-discovery and they're unlikely to be swayed by domestic focused ads. Explorer brands promise freedom and promote themselves as a means to help others experience the new and unknown. The worst outcome for an explorer brand would be to come across as being rigid or corporate. Seventh is the rebel who craves revolution and revenge whilst the greatest fear is powerlessness. Think of characters such as James Dean and James Bond. Customers appreciate the unconventional and forcefully reject the status quo. They're more likely to value shocking and unique content with no obvious sell in it. Rebel brands need to position themselves as the alternative to the mainstream and make a big effort to stand out. Avoiding being accepted by the mainstream is their biggest challenge. Eighth is the lover who lives to experience pleasure in their work, in relationships and fears being unwanted or unloved. Think something like Marilyn Monroe or maybe even Kim Kardashian. 
love a customer's value the aesthetic appearance of goods and services they're likely to be drawn to more premium brands that make them feel more attractive to others love a brands promise passion and promote themselves as being glamorous think of victoria's secrets for example love a brands can't come across as cheap or business-like or it may ruin the fantasy Ninth is the magician who wants to understand the universe and their place in it, but fears negative consequences of that exploration. Think of someone like Nikola Tesla or Elon Musk. Magician customers need to feel like they can grow wiser or influence people by using that product or brand. Ads should be as imaginative and inspiring as possible, whilst also promising knowledge to be the gateway to a transformative experience. And to be honest with you, the worst thing a magician brand can do is be too structured, regulated or hollow. Tenth is the ruler, driven by their desire for power of control and fearful of chaos or being overthrown. Think of a strong leader, maybe Margaret Thatcher or Jay-Z. Ruler customers are naturally dominant and will not appreciate patronizing or dumbed down advertising. They will value ads that reinforce their feelings of power and stability. A ruler brand will be damaged if it was perceived as weak or if it was publicly defeated by another company. Eleventh is the jester who wants to live in the moment and enjoy life. They fear boredom and above all else, they want to have fun. Think of Dory in Finding Nemo or Jim Carrey in pretty much every single film he's done apart from 23. Jester customers find regular adverts deeply boring, but they love anything unusual, playful, especially ads that poke fun at themselves. The Jester brand promises their customers entertainment and their ads should be lighthearted and not take life too seriously. They should always avoid being seen as bitter, strict or serious. Finally, the twelfth is the sage who seeks the truth and wants to find wisdom. Think Yoda or David Bowie. Sage customers believe that knowledge comes from growth and constantly looking for new sources of information. They prefer ads that challenge them to think a new way. Sage brands promise wisdom to their audience and they trust customers to grasp difficult ideas and understandings whilst also stimulating them intellectually. Intelligently put together joking ads can also work, but avoid being too dumb or patronizing. And that's pretty much it. So I hope this has helped you to think about your business in a slightly different way. Hopefully this video has given you an insight in regards to why a lot of companies project themselves in the way that they do. And it's also inspired you to engage with your audience in a new way as well. If you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.